Hi everyone, I am Kamlakar and I am back with yet another challenging program of AI in Python. In my last video, I covered practical 3 representing a star algorithm. Please go through it if you have not done so because you will need the concepts to understand this video. Today, I will be talking about recursive best first search program which is kind of a modified version of a star but the main advantage of this algorithm is it reduces the memory requirements and mimics the operation of best first search algorithms by keeping track of other better solutions in the expansion of graph. The algorithm for this is given in the book and this is how it works. Please go through it as you will notice that I have actually converted the algorithm into a program. Here we go. Since this is my fourth program of searching algorithms, I'm assuming that you have gone through previous three tutorials and you are aware of various classes and functions that are used again and again in these programs. So simply use the code of graph problem, graph problem and node classes from a star program. Once again, I'll need utils.py and the file should be kept in the same folder as this program. At the end, a function to create an undirected graph. Next, I'll include functions related to f values. I hope you remember f which is g plus h where g is cost of start to node and h is estimated cost from node to goal. The first function lowest underscore f value underscore node as the name suggests finds a node from a given node list with lowest value of f. Node list will contain the successors of a node. This is like finding minimum number from a collection along with index. This function is slightly different from previous program because in this program I am directly returning the node unlike the previous program in which I returned index. The second function second underscore lowest underscore f value is to find the second lowest f value. That's obvious huh? This function needs the node list and the lowest f value. So with one additional condition that the f values of the nodes in the successor should be greater than lowest f value, I can get the second lowest f value. Where and how to use these functions that I'll tell you shortly. I'll also declare the Romania map and locations for the map. They have been collapsed so you are not able to see them entirely. Don't worry about it. Now the actual functions of the program. At the beginning, I have defined recursive BFS function with problem as parameter. The job of this function is just to create initial node, assign f value to it and call the actual RBFS function. The RBFS function that you see is very much similar to the algorithm given in the book. It has three parameters, problem, node and f underscore limit. At the beginning of execution, it would get the start node and f limit as infinity from recursive VFS. To understand the logic of the program, it's always a good practice to add a lot of print statements with values of variables so that you come to know how the values change throughout the execution. By the way, are you at line 132? Great, that means you are with me. Okay, I'll check whether the node is a goal or not and if it is a goal node, the function exits. Note that it returns a list because two values are to be returned. The first value in the list represents the node and the second value represents f cost. If node object is present, then f cost will be none and if node object is none, then f cost will be present. Like a star function, here I'll expand the node object to find its successors. In the process, each successor node gets its f cost. Check the statement at line 138 which is child.f equal to my max in the bracket gval plus hval comma node.f comma. The next two parameters are additional parameters and they are used for printing useful information. This statement is very important in the program. The question is why take maximum of two values? Can't we directly assign the value of g plus h to child's f cost? like the previous program. I'll explain this with an example. Suppose you have a graph in which 
स्टार्ट नोड इज ए विथ एफ कॉस्ट एज थ्री सेवेंटी थ्री सपोज ए जनरेट सक्सेसर्स एच विथ एफ कॉस्ट एज फोर नाइन्टी फाइव एंड बी विथ एफ कॉस्ट एज फोर वन नाइन सिंस बी हैज स्मॉलर एफ कॉस्ट इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड नेक्स्ट बी गेट्स एक्सपांडेड टू जनरेट सी विथ एफ कॉस्ट सिक्स वन थ्री डी विथ एफ कॉस्ट फाइव फोर फोर ई विथ एफ कॉस्ट फोर सिक्सटी वन Since E has smaller f cost, it gets expanded to give f with f cost six thirty three and G with f cost five one eight. So G has smallest f cost among the two. But overall, there is one more node H with f cost four ninety five. This is determined using the value of f limit. So the control should should switch to H to expand it. But before this switch happens. smallest f cost successor of e which is g assigns its f cost to e changing it from 461 to 518 this would help e to sort of remember that there is a solution with f cost 518 through it which was tried earlier as the branch collapses successors of e are removed from memory due to recursion same thing happens for node b B's F cost changes from 419 to 518, and all its successors are removed from memory. Have you followed this part? Okay. The control then shifts to H. Now assume that successors of H give rise to solutions whose F cost is greater than 700. That means now they can't be used as solution. The control has to come back to B. Now B with updated F cost 518 generates its successors. Now comes the role of my max function. When C gets generated with F cost 613, obviously 613 is greater than 518, so its F cost becomes 613. The value of G plus H. Same thing happens for D. But now what will happen to E, whose F cost obtained using G plus H is 461. it is less than its parents f cost this is when value 518 is selected for e i hope you have followed this it's very important that you truly understand what is the role of each and every part of your program at this time let me quickly show you the my max function it compares the values of child's f and parent's f and returns the maximum of 2 but check the use of print functions to give more information in the output I have simply added assigning child's f or node's f statements to let me know which one is getting executed and when. Thus, at line one thirty nine, a successor list is generated. If there are no successors, then there is no solution, and I'll return none with f value as infinity. Next, I'll use while loop to explore the successors. First, I'll find the smallest f cost successor node. If its f cost is greater than f limit, then I'll return none. But I'll also return the f cost. Alternative gets the second lowest f value using function which I have already explained. With this information, I'll call RBFS once again with the problem object, best node, and new f limit which is minimum of current f limit and alternative f cost value. This function returns a list containing two values. First value is the result, and the second value is the f cost coming from successor. And if the result is not none, I'll return the result. At the end, let's complete the formality of calling this function and confirming the output. To execute the program, first I'll create graph problem object using Riemannia map with Drobeta as source and Vasilui as destination. This would explore all the parts of the program. Arad Bukarest won't do it. Then I'll call recursive BFS function. Check the output below. It's not complete, but you can try on your own. That finishes our BFS. As always, the link of the code is given in the description. If you have followed the program, click on the like button or give any suggestion. Do subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos. Thanks for watching.